Hello. Hello everybody, I hope you're well. Uh, hopefully this is between Christmas and New Year and that to give us an idea we thought well if you're gonna have turkey on Christmas Day then you're gonna have leftovers the following day. Then probably, probably, a, curry. probably a turkey sandwich or something on the, on the third day. Then well why don't we reserve you something that you've already had? It's in the Christmas spirit of things, isn't it? Just another repeat. But what we've done, we've sort of rebranded, uh, if you like, uh, put a new thumbnail on the first episode of a garden room series that we did at the beginning of uh, 2022. Um, we thought we enjoyed it. We thought it's a good series. There's loads of hints and tips in it. Um, it's, a, it's a huge thing. It's quite. A, it's a garden room with a difference, really. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, here it is. There's a link in the description to the playlist of all of them if you fancy watching them. Um, so yeah, a bit of a, a rehash, maybe a bit of a re revive, and uh, have a great Christmas. Have a lot. Of, uh, enjoy your time off, and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much. See you in 2023. We won't. You haven't got a clue who you are. There you are. Well, well not relatively speaking. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. There you are. I'll leave that bit in. Why not? A bit of bounce, that's all it's possible. Why not? Morning, everybody. Um, today is Wednesday. We're going to start a new job today. We've got uh, a nice garden room to do, big garden room, seven metres by five metres. Uh, in the last episode, which was on Friday, um, you saw us finish up at the Harborn job. All the steels are in. There's nothing else we can do now until uh, the glass is in. There's that, that much glass. We can't board it up and carry on. So we need that glass in. So, But the customer that we're now going to be working for is fully aware that this job is ongoing. So we're going to start this garden room. And if the glass goes in, then we have to leave the garden room and then come back. It's all, it's all right. So we'll continue it that way. There's not a lot going to be happening in terms of building, I wouldn't have thought this week, because uh, we've got to get all the materials there. It's a massive garden, so we need the materials dropped off from various places. I've got a lot of running around to do to get some stuff as well, and then we've got to get it all at the top of the garden um, in, order to, in order to give us a good head start for next week. The weather's supposed to be good, so we're going to give it a go then, and uh, yeah, really kick it off next week. So it's just really a lot of time lapsing, a lot of deliveries, running rounds, uh, digging holes, that sort of thing. So uh, we'll see how we get on. And I've just realised that um, this is my first bit of camera. And I've been very nervous about it and I've put a lot of thought into it. And um, I've done my hair for it. For whatever reason. Which is stupid enough, but I've also put an aftershave on. <laughs> What's all that about? <laughs> um, yeah, nobody sent for me. Uh, <laughs> right then, let's crack on. Let's go! Oh, fuck. Hello, everybody. Hope you're well. I just thought that I will walk you from the van to where we're going to be working for the next couple of weeks. We're building a garden room on the back of this, at the back of the garden, at this house. It's a big garden, and it's a bit of a walk. And here we are, look at that. I'll try and put in the corner of the screen, if I can do it, a little video of the uh, the trees that were here, that have been taken out. I'll put the details of the tree surgeon who took them out as well, because he's done a great job. You know, all the materials have got to be taken all the way up here. So if we forget anything, it's a long walk back. And here we are, lads, just taking the shed down there. We didn't know it was there until the tree surgeon took all the bushes down and all the trees around it. That's got to come out. And we've got a a garden room. It's going to be a meter in from all three sides which is going to leave us seven meters along the back by four and on the front of this corner there's going to be a little two by two meter stick out for the uh, which is going to be a shed the shed might actually be bigger than that internally and we shall see it's going to look something like that it's a bit of a crew drawing but it's going to be seven meters along the back uh, four meters if you can imagine a seven by four meter box and then on the front of it there's going to be a little two meter by two meter shed all combined uh, so 
yeah, with a little patio at the front. So this is our first day. They're taking the shed down now. I've got to load the van, get all the stuff up here, and then we will make a start. That is a long walk. It is indeed. indeed. That's the, I'm out of breath. That's the van unloaded. Uh, sheds down. That's what it was. Load of stuff all dragged out. It's got to clear a bit more space, so I've got to nip off now. Get some more materials, a bit more equipment, and away we go. And there's Mark. Give us a wave, Mark. Hey, there he is. <laughs> okay, you'll have to excuse the wind. I just wanted to show you this with our initial setup. So, you've already seen that Ad's uh, done his walk round this morning. He's just gone off now to get some essentials that we need augers, marking pins, etc. So, that's where he's gone. Just sort of show our initial then. So, we want to try and get this as central as we can. Now, you've already, already seen on Adam's footage. The fences um, are all coming in at different angles. The back fence goes off at an angle that way, all that way as well. So what we're doing is now setting up our date and pins. So we put timbers in there. So in effect, our first hole is going to be there. So 300, 300 million from this one, 300 million from this one. So what Mick's doing now is you're going to get a rough gauge, pull our line through there. You can just see the nice green line there. And we'll try and use this fence as our datum again so we can measure off it. But we think we might have to change that because the more we come this way, the more when you go square, it's going to go back that way. And that's already kicking in this way. So this is a bit just initial bit of a jiggery pokery, as, uh, as, call, as the technical term is, to make sure we get exactly where we are. But this now is our datum. So everything will pivot from this way. This one will pivot this way. And this one will pivot this way and while we do that Mark's just making giving us uh, a good clearance for us get all the stuff under our feet we have got quite a hard stand in there which is good and bad because obviously where we need to put the holes we're gonna have to move stuff but at least it stops us walking the mud for now so I can get move each slab where we need the holes and that'll be good for us to walk on without all the dirt falling in the holes that we dig and likewise over there where the old shed base was so I'll stick it on time lapse we'll crack on with it and then we'll do another quick discussion in uh, in a while Dayton pins, green line up to there. Pull the meter off the off the, the fence there. Going to keep that as our square. And then we've now worked out that this one over to there. We put a line on the fence over there because that's getting some metal pins allow us to square off a little bit better and move them if we need to. And I've just used my uh, large square just to line the lines up. Right, then we're all marked out. These are the dimensions that we've been given. But we think that potentially this design might change a bit. We've had some uh, better ideas. Um, so we are, we've got access down either side, as the customer's requested. So we've evened it out as best we can. We can't get it slap bang in the middle because of the way that the fence is one. That one kicks right out, or in, I should say, as you can see there. So we've squared it off this fence here. So that's a metre parallel to the fence all the way up and that gives us a nice square edge here facing the house which is all good seven metres across the back which is fine again it's got access around the back so you better walk all the way around it for maintenance you've got to clear up the trees the leaves off the trees that sort of thing and this is ignore this line here so we're coming down uh, four metres, well, I should be coming down six metres, beg your pardon, across two, into, and then across five, up four, and down seven, like that. However, what this has thrown up by marking it all up is we have a lot of dead space at the back. Look at that. Which is usable space, but 
not really with the design that we've got. So what we think we're going to suggest to the customer is that instead of the front being the shed, we could have a shed, a uh, off-the-shelf shed basically, a 6x6. You could even get an 8x6 in this space here, hidden by the house, uh, by the, the garden room, which you could get access from up this pathway here. And then that there becomes the bathroom with a high-level frosted window uh, for lights. The customer has requested that we get some natural light into the bathroom and that sort of ticks all the boxes. And what I also think is that this being four meters, it seems small. When if we're already coming down uh, six meters from here, why don't we bring that out another meter so then the room is five meters wide or five meters deep sorry five by seven we think that might be better so we shall see so we're not going to do too much today we're going to dig the holes where we think where, where we know won't be moved if the design changes slightly these have to stay in we're not going to do any down here in case we're not doing them twice or filling them back in which is what we don't want to do Okay, now it's all marked out. We're going to dig holes every 500 all around the perimeter for now. And then internally, we're going to split the difference from the width. It's going to be about every 1100. We're going to have holes every 500 down this way, down there. Uh, and then that'll all be supported in 4x3 timber, which we'll show you as we go. Right, to dig the holes, we've hired this. Now it's going to go one of three ways, I think. It's either going to be brilliant, yeah. and we're going to wonder why we didn't ever use one before. Mm -hmm. It's going to be absolutely rubbish, and it's going to go straight back. What a waste of money. Because of all the roots and the trees, maybe. Or, option C, it's going to go hilariously wrong. Yes. What do we reckon? What do you think? C. C. <laughs> C. Let's be positive. Mark, what do you think? C. C. Okay, well, we're going to film it. We're going to give it a go. Here we are. Option C, that we're thinking. There it is running. Here we go then. Yeah. I'm filming. If there's no other holes been dug. Look, we're not trying to pull it. Look, nothing at all's been done. We're going for it first of all, straight on camera. Add away from the mirror. Okay, so we should have got option A, option shouldn't we? Well, option A, for now. for now. Option A is the hole number one. And so on and so on. Oh, a bit of concrete in that one because of the shit the base, yeah. Where well, option C comes in. That kicked off then. Yeah, that kicked off then, yeah. yeah. It's a clutch. There we go, that's a good safety mechanism, isn't it? So that kicked in. That this must be a clutch. We was, we knew it sort of would be, yeah. but it looks like as soon as you click it that way, you have to pull it back and reset it again. Very clever. Makes it a lot safer. Pick it softly, you know what? Yeah. Put 
out now, yeah, it has cut out. Very good. Day two, garden room build. Lovely day. It's cold, which is nice. We've just had a bit of a meeting with the client. We talked about what we found yesterday regarding the dimensions. And it could be a little bit bigger for um, the class, really. So she's agreed that uh, this line, which is four metres from there, is now going to be five metres in there. And then the main difference is that she's requested that we make the shed. Right, so now it's all off the van, now it's got to go up the garden. Stacks it all nice and neat, air gaps all the way around it, it's got to be all covered up. Basically, we're keeping Richard happy. I then moved on to digging all the holes that were previously marked out, whilst Mark and Rich went round the holes I'd already dug and made them wider and got them down to depth. Right, end of the day, it's been a good one today. All the timber has been delivered uh, and brought up here, which is a job in itself. Stacked very particularly by Mr. Richard Wood. He was in charge of that. All nicely covered. The holes have all been dug. There's just a few of them left just to widen up a little bit, just to take this right amount of concrete that we need. There's 94 holes here, which is potentially a bit overkill, but better to be safe than sorry. It's potentially going to be a gym, this is. I'm um, not too sure yet, but for all I know, it could have big Smith machines and dumbbells crashing down on the floor, all sorts. So we've gone, uh, we've gone full belt and braces for it. But the main thing is there's now an add-on at the back, which is very similar to what the front's going to be. The front sticks out. Uh, a metre across to and back in and then across the front where this is sort of the same but it's to fit in with the area that we've got so it's two metres and then it's out about uh, 1500 and that's going to be squared across there and that's where the bathroom is going to go which means by having this little add-on and tucking the bathroom into this far corner they get a floor space of five meters by four meters yes that's right five by four meters that is huge i could do whatever they want with that and with the shed and the bathroom all down this channel whatever configuration they want down there so tomorrow i will be mainly um finding materials get them on site uh, ready to start concreting hopefully on Monday 
So I think we'll be able to crack on with it. Right, see you tomorrow. First pickup of the day, 1060 mil, three meter lengths of underground pipe. They're going to be cut and concrete into the ground to form uh, stilts effectively. Right. Second pickup of the day, all the rods that we need, and all the M24 bolts that we need. Right, on to the next one. Quick, how cold does it test? Pretty cold. Right, third stop of the day. Pickup number three, done. Now finally, I'm going to work. I got back to the job and the lads helped me unload everything that I just got. I've picked up the post hole digger, auger, thingy-majig, whatever it is. It's coming on the screen now. I got it from Speedy Hire, uh, drawing being used now. I'm going to take that back. It's been a great little pit of kit actually, and I'll talk a little bit more about it now. Right, quick little word on this. If you're thinking about hiring one, just be careful. It's, if you're doing virgin ground, uh, then you shouldn't have too much of an issue. If you hit anything, roots, bricks, pebbles, it will kick uh, and it will hurt. What I was doing up there, the root layer underneath the ground was obviously all at the same height because it was kicking at exactly the same depth every time. And this thing, which is a safety mechanism, which cuts off the rotation of the blade, when it does kick too far, it hits your leg and it cuts it out. But because it was hitting at the same height every time, it was hitting my shin, and you can see that. At the exactly same spot every single time, and it was hurting. So we took a bit of a gamble with it. It has helped us massively. Could have done with a wider um, blade, which you can get, you can get up to 200 mil, but then that just increases the, the, the kick, I presume, if you hit something. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a leap of faith. Don't do it if you know for a fact that you're going to hit something if you're replacing a, uh, a fence or something. It's like an old post house and you're going to hit the old concrete. Don't do it. But virgin ground, it might be worth a shot. Stop by four. Stop five. If you want decent stuff at a good price, this is the place to come. If you want to smile with it, you're probably better off going elsewhere. Stop six. We have an unscheduled stop seven. Mark just broke his phone, so I've just brought it here to get it fixed. Stop eight. Secret location. Nine. Back here, number 10. And whilst I was doing all that running around, I fire in, going to the lockup, getting some bits of equipment, getting some materials, just trying to make next week as easy as possible, trying to get everything there so we can hit the ground running. Mick, Mark and Rich were going around all the holes, getting them wide enough to take the pipe, getting them down to depth. Again, just all belt and braces, trying to get everything ready for next week. Now behind them, this was happening. The tree fellas, and I don't know why they're called tree fellas, because there was only two of them. <laughs> Classic. They were taking down the rest of that tree, getting rid of all the waste, cutting back all the overhang for the neighbour's trees, basically doing everything that the clients asked them to do, and they did a great tidy job.
Now next up Rich is going to explain what we're going to be doing next in order to get our levels but what I want you to do is listen out for when this tree hits the ground Mick is going to come out with some grade A solid gold bands. Honestly, it's a laugh in there. Okay, so what we're doing now is we've identified which hole we're going to use as our reference hole, if you like, because we've got to put those six inch pipes um, down there because it's lower, as Mix, uh, uh, sorry, as Adam's already explained. We've identified that that one is the one that we want to use as our hole zero. So I'm going to cut some of that pipe that you can see there and then set it to the depth of that. And we want to be at ground level with that one, so I'll cut it, drop it to there, so when we do start dipping the laser, we can stick it on top of the pipe rim, so we know we're gonna be the same every single time, the same reference. So that's what we're gonna do now. Right then, that's the end of the day, end of the week. Thanks to the efforts of uh, Aquarius tree surgeons, they've got this big tree down um, for the customer, and they've lopped all these, all the neighbor's trees back. Uh, additional to the, the trees they took down uh, the other week, beginning of uh, beginning of the year. So, thanks to them. In fact, I've got their card here somewhere. So, look, uh, we focus the coast trees facing the average, but they work, they work all over. There's the fella's name, there's his numbers. Any issues, any jobs for him? Give him a bell. Uh, we've got all the uh, all the tongue and groove flooring and the roofing sheets there all there this is additional to the timber that arrived yesterday all the osb is on top as well ready to go all the pipes are here to make our stilts uh, effectively uh, all the metals here to make the shoes all the rods are here the method that we're going to use is identical i.e we've nicked it basically from um Oakwood Garden Rooms. If you look there, uh, their channel up, they, they, he does loads of Liam. I think his name is loads of tutorials on how to do this kind of uh, this kind of piling system for garden rooms. So we've basically we've nicked it. Uh, so we're not going to do a tutorial on this because you can just go over to his his site and his uh, YouTube channel, and he does loads of them, and he's brilliant at it. So and he's far better at explaining things than we'll ever be. So. Go over to go over to him if you want to see exactly how we're going to do it. We're going to show you what we're doing, but we're not going to explain it really because it's all there for you to see on, on his channel. It's far better. Uh, all our holes are dug. I don't think he would have dug this many, but we've beefed it up basically just because of the size of it. And we're ready to go. There's a massive fall in the ground here. So the um, from ground level to the to the uh, the floor level at the front is going to be about just over half a meter. So we're going to have to come up with some kind of some steps up to it eventually. Um, although the customer is very keen on, on trying to level this garden uh, with the ground that's going to come out from the bottom because all that garden's coming out. So that's going to be a work in progress really of our final levels garden wise to the to the floor level of this structure. What we're going to do, we've come from our highest point here, concreted that in, and then the top of that plastic there will be a level with the top of our first nut on all the hovers, all the others, sorry, ready for the shoes to go on. It'll all become self explanatory next week. Or we'll hop over to local garden rooms and see what they do. Uh, the ground stepped up massively here. This is where the patio was, hence the slabs. So what we're going to do, we've come down a few, couple of metres, started here, and we're going to do everything from this kerb down using this as our datum. And then once all those are in, we're going to dig this down, backfill this, and then still keep off the same datum and then redo these. But if we come off this height as it stands, we'll probably be about seven eight hundred out the ground down there maybe even higher so it can't really be done now an obvious way around this would have been this little issue would have been to lower the ground from the back down but there's so much to take out to get it level if we were to take this as our level and take that ground down we would undermine all these fencing would have had to have come out it's uh, a nightmare basically so 
this is far better way of doing it especially as the customer is keen to level this garden up the best that we can in the future so yeah hasn't been much of a doing week really although it's been hard work to get all, all the stuff here and everything but we've got a good run at it next week weather's supposed to be nice so hopefully we'll uh we'll get some building done next week right have a good weekend